a document that we need these five pages and say, okay, I'll do these two pages, you do these two pages, you do this one. We've laid out exactly what we want then and we've documented it. We can break down the piece and, and, and give pieces to different people and get things done that way. I've worked with some great programmers that were sort of, you know, lone rangers. All right? They worked very well on their own and they did a bang up job, but they weren't people that could think about and design their code before they worked, and they limited their potential, because they could never work as part of a bigger team, because they could never break down the task into smaller tasks and say, you handle this, you handle this, you handle this. And that's really an important skill to have. All right? Now to be sure, many projects you might be working on your own. But there are some projects where you have a team, and if you have a team, you want to make sure everyone is on the same page. You can't be on the same page unless there is a page, right? So you need to develop these design documents. All right, so what is your plan going to look like? First of all, you identify the audience for your project, and you identify the topic and purpose of your project. In other words, I'm not simply going to say that I'm developing a uh, site about skiing. I'm going to say I'm developing a site for teenagers that will teach you how to, that, that, that will give them an introduction on how to ski. All right? So I'm not just talking about skiing. I've identified the audience as teenagers. It's not little kids. It's not adults. All right? That can have an impact on the kind of material you put on it. We talked at the beginning of the class about creating a presentation about Martin Luther King for high school students. And one of the things that we said was we might want to keep the, the video clip short. All right? Because, again, you know, people's attention span. We could probably hit the highlights of the video and do a good job that way without showing the whole video. That's true for developing, say, for high school students. If, however, we were developing a similar sort of page, but for college history students, for them people, for them folks, the assumption might be that they better have a longer attention span. And they are going to be interested in all the details, or they ought to be interested in all the details. So therefore, a longer presentation might be required. So you're going to identify your uh, audience and to identify specifically the purpose and put it in terms of the audience. Write a few paragraphs that explain this. So explain who your audience is, what your purpose is, and state some goals of why you are creating the project and why your users will be visiting your project. In other words, what your users hope to get out of it. So that's the first part of the plan. Just a few paragraphs that sketch out who your audience is, what your project is going to be about, what the purpose of the project is, and what your goals are. We're then going to have the detailed design. And the detailed design consists of a sketch of every page. <coughs> As you're doing this, of course, you're going to consider your purpose. Like, what pages am I going to have? If I'm doing a website about skiing, possibly a page that compares the subtle differences between two kinds of ski wax isn't necessarily needed. All right? Because that's outside of the purpose of my um, site. But maybe a guide to choose how big a skis you should buy, depending on your height, that might be a good thing. All right? Or some images that show the different kinds of boots and bindings to sort of introduce that to people. All right? What you're going to do for this is you're going to create a sketch for each page. So let's carry through this. Let's carry through this. Skiing 
I'm going to create a sketch for each page. Now, you can map this up in Word or other software. You can hand sketch it as long as you can scan it. I don't really care. All right. But I might do something like this. Beginning how many ends in beginning? Beginning Okay, beginning skiing four teams. And maybe I'm gonna have here maybe a little animated GIF. that shows shafts of people skiing. So there'll be a little animation that shows people skiing. And then I'll have maybe links to links to the home page, links to choosing ski, choosing equipment, links to basic technique. links to safety considerations and however many pages I have. That would be maybe a sketch of the home page. Doesn't have to be like something brilliant that you're going to take home and hang on your refrigerator or anything. It'll have to be a brilliant drawing, but anyone glancing at this should have an idea that, yeah, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to have, in this case, I'm going to have four pages. And there's going to be some sort of banner. Maybe there's some sort of logo here that I've de designed in using a photo manipulation tool or something like that. And there'll be an animated GIF here, and there'll be a series of links. For each thing, then, maybe I'll have, that's the home page. Then maybe I'll have my choosing equipment page. And maybe that will be a photo gallery, all right, with some text, sort of like a photo essay. Or I could say beginning skiing again. Choosing equipment. And then maybe have skis. with some images of skis and some text. Boots, some images and some text. And so on down the line. And then I can have the links on this side. Maybe the basic technique page and I'm just going to abbreviate some of these things in the interest of time. Consists of video about the basic skiing position. A video about a um, um, stopping. It's easy to stop on skis. Stopping correctly is, is the catch. All right. Turning. So maybe you have on this page three videos about the basic position, 
stopping and turning, along with the header and the links. And then finally, under safety, you have maybe pictures along with text, let will say. Well, I'm about a page short of the five to seven, but I have covered one, two, three, and then with text and typography, four out of the five. So it sounds like a lot, but really when you consider images and text are probably like no-brainers. You just have to incorporate two of the three, audio, video, and animation. Now we're going to talk about animated GIF, or we've, we've talked about animated GIFs. We'll also talk about using HTML5 animation techniques as well. So you can do some things with that as well. All right. This is what I mean by a sketch of each page. Now in the interest of time, I, I kind of abbreviated some things. You could put more explanation here. You know, video, you know, showing, you know, a video of one to two minutes showing basic stopping techniques or something like that. The idea is, is when I could take and give this to someone and they could build the site for me. All right. Ideally, a good design, I should be able to give to someone and say, hey, I've designed this, you go and make it. And you shouldn't be too surprised with how it looks. All right. If you are surprised on how it looks, either the person really messed up in creating the site, or you didn't do a good enough job defining exactly what it is that you want. All right. But if, for example, some park service asked me to create a site about skiing for beginners, I could then take this here and I could describe to them the different things that are going to be on it, and they'd have a sense of what I was going to do before I actually started building and getting into this range where the expenses start to be really, really high. Now, that's a sketch of each page. For animations and videos, I would like to see a storyboard. And what a storyboard is, we'll talk more about it when we get into the video section. But a storyboard simply shows um, the main sort of action in a video. It's not a frame-by-frame -frame drawing, but it shows the main sort of things. Like, let's say I was going to do a storyboard on, you know, how to, how to get on a ski lift which for me was one of the most terrifying things of skiing. All right. My storyboard might look like this. You wait in position. Looks like a duck there. And you wait for the ski lift to come down on the cable. When it gets close, and again, you'd have captions describing this. When it gets close, you get in position, in a sort of a semi-sitting position right here. And then, next thing you know it, you're on the lift going up. All right. So you don't show necessarily every action, but you show every sort of change in action. If I was going to do, say, a storyboard for a video of this class, I might start out with an empty drawing of a whiteboard. I might show me up here talking. I might then show that I press the button and the projection appears. So I sort of hit the highlights of what's going to be in the video. It doesn't have to completely tell the story of the video, but it should sure to show sort of the main, um, what would you say, highlights of the video. And you can do that for animations or video. For audio, I would like you to do a little outline of what you're going to talk about. So if I was going to, for example, on the safety page, 
talk about how to tell if you're frostbite, and I was going to have an audio. I would want an outline of what was going to be covered in that section. You know, a definition of frostbite, how to tell if you have frostbite, what you can do if you think you have it, and so on down the line. All right? Okay. So I don't 